Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader uh weekend uh, wrap-up show. Uh, feels like a long time since uh, we had our last uh, recording. Uh, I was on vacation last week and came back on Tuesdays for Tuesday's session. So it, again, guys, it, again, now that we're kind of uh, winding down the summer and there's only two, three weeks left before, especially in the Northeast here. I know Florida kids, I think, started school already. Um, but, you know, we're starting to wind down. People are starting to kind of get their heads uh, back into reality, kind of coming back from vacation and getting ready for the school year and obviously getting ready uh, for the fourth quarter. So I, I do believe we will get our uh, normal market structure. OK, um, and we lost a little bit of market structure a couple of weeks ago, not the I think it was the previous video that I did. Uh, the previous weekend wrap up that at some point we lost our macro structure for a few sessions, but it's been pretty good. We'll talk about uh, we'll talk about the specific markets uh, in a second. Uh, just a quick announcement before uh, we kind of dive into things. Uh, again, we only have a week left, guys. Okay, uh, PS60 Workshop 3.0 is next Saturday. Okay, next Saturday at 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time. It will be held uh, in the live webinar. We're going to go about three three to four hours, and then we'll do pretty thorough uh, Q&A. Uh, the greatest thing ab about that is, again, a lot of you guys have you know, been in the webinar for so many years now, and you see it play out live, and, it, and it's so sometimes it's so quick, so aggressive, that your brain can't process. We're, we're trying to kind of reverse, uh, kind of reverse the engineering, kind of go from, instead of going from the foundation to the roof, we're kind of going from the roof back to the foundation, and kind of slow things down, and kind of break down the moving parts. Uh, also, again, obviously, for all you guys who are joining us for the very, very first time, you'll obvi obviously have uh, that extra complimentary month that we are offering all the way to uh, September the 24th. So you have a lot of time, a lot of ample time to really get your head around this uh, and really see if, if pivots are uh, for you. Again, nobody else uh, on the planet uh, trades this specific style uh, than us. Again, you can go on YouTube, find anything, any type of trading you want, you won't find this. Uh, again, uh, it's just an area of interest that I stumbled upon to about seven, seven and a half years ago. And we've been trying to get it better and better uh, pretty much every single year. And again, as obviously all you guys in the webinar and the Twitter feed, uh, and even all our friends who are following us, uh, you kind of see how special uh, these pivots really are. So hopefully uh, you guys will uh, take advantage and we'll see you guys the following uh, next Saturday, next Saturday, uh, 9, 9 a.m. So uh, let's talk about the market, right? So I, I had a really good five-day rest. I was not watching the market whatsoever. Again, I, I, I firmly believe that if you're going on vacation, go on vacation, okay? If you need to, uh, if you need to get your mind right and you got to get centered and all that stuff, that because this business is so damn aggressive and it will really burn you out way before your time. Okay, uh, I don't watch the market. I don't. I don't. I don't look at chart. I don't do anything. Okay, uh, so when I got back on Tuesday for Tuesday's session, I said to myself, "Well, you know what? I'm going to ease into it because again, it's very, very important. The longer you trade, you realize that not only do you have to have an incredible process to get you, get you from point A to point B, but you need to be in rhythm in the market. It's like it's like surfing when a surfer." Uh, gets on the board, right? Now, you know, no two waves are going to be the same. The surfer almost has to be in rhythm with the ocean or else they're going to have a, a very, very aggressive uh, wipeout. And what happened was, you know, morning strategy started Tuesday and I said, well, you know what? I haven't done this now in five days. Let me, you know, let me just kind of sit back, just kind of relax. Yeah, I'll give you guys the pivots. I just want to get in a little bit of rhythm in the market. And next thing I know, it was like an hour into the market and I traded like seven stocks. Okay. Incredible, uh, aggressive value. Now, again, for all you new traders, I, I, I always say this and, and you hear this on social media and I, I think it's one of the biggest crutches. And, and this is not the first time you, you guys have heard me say this, but I think a lot of people, when the market starts going lower, okay, um, where there's a negative bias. So many people just trade from the long side. Again, again, there's nothing wrong. Look, look, I, I, 
there's, there's, you don't have to apologize for anything, okay? If you trade from the long side and all you do is buy breakouts and all that stuff, that's fine. But, but there is a reality of when the market turns to hell, right? And sometimes the market does, you have to trade from both sides of the market. And I do think the only thing I will say um, that God gave you two hands, right? Two ears, two eyes, right? Two feet, right? All that good stuff. You got to trade both sides of the market. And unfortunately, a lot of traders use, well, sit on your hands, cash as a position is a very, very excessive excuse. Because again, the markets do go down. And when you see a market, especially like this, when it gets very, very aggressive, you, you have to trade from both sides of the market. Again, you don't need to trade every single day, but you do have to have some sort of course of action. It's just the, it's just the reality. You can sit there you know, you can sit there and make excuses all you want. Well, cash is up. Yeah, it is. But what happens if the market goes down for six months? Are you not going to pay your bills? Are you going to tell? Uh, are you going to tell your mortgage lender that you know you can't pay your mortgage because the market's going down? No, it's 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 silly. So I, I do think there is a very very big crush, and unfortunately, a lot of new traders when they hear this stuff on social media, they run with it, right? Oh well, listen, this guy's not doing. It. I'm you know, I'm sitting out as well. Here's the cap. Here's the only one time that I believe. Well, not the one time, but I I, I think there is an area of the market that you have a legitimate um, opportunity to actually sit it out, okay? And this is it. It's not a market that's going straight down, right? You know, it's not a bear market. Bear markets are very, very good, as, as they all say. Stocks take, um, the ele you know, the stocks take the stairs up and the elevator down. The one thing that especially a new trader, because again, you're new, okay? And I think, I personally think anybody who's been trading less than three years is considered a new trader. I believe when you have Political uncertainty, okay? Political uncertainty or economic uncertainty, I think that is an actually valid way to kind of get out the way, okay? When you're an experienced trader, when you're doing this 5, 7, 10, 15, 20 years, again, you know what you want by now, right? You know what you want. You've kind of been through, especially if somebody's been trading at least 10 years, you know what you want. You've been through, uh, you've been through the wars. And if you've been trading since uh, 2000, and nine, well, 2009 is actually a bad example because 2009 was literally the bottom, bottom, November 2009 was literally the, the bottom of this generational bull market. But if you've been trading at least 12 years, going back to 2007, you've seen it, right? You've seen the potential of an economic collapse, right? It doesn't get any worse than that. So you kind of know what you're up against before it comes because you've seen it before. When you're a new trader and you're sitting there a year, two years, and three years, all you know is buy low float stocks is going to right? You know, all you know is a bull market, okay? So any single time you get a trickle-down effect, the first thing you do when you go into your comfort zone will cash as a position because you know, right, and you're at least you're hoping that the security blanket of the generational bull market will bail you out and you can sit two, three days and watch the market rate go back up, right? That's fine. When you go into an, an uncertainty, right? We saw the biggest uncertainty, obviously, was the, you know, was the imminent collapse, which never collapsed, but the imminent collapse of the global economic structure back in 2007, 2008, to kind of where we are now. Now, again, nobody is saying that we are anywhere close, okay? We're like a pimple on an elephant's ass right now. But, okay, for the intraday trader, for even the swing trader, for the position trader, whatever trader you are, you're going to be affected. I personally think we're two and a half years of this whole China crisis. And again, if you read the headlines, and again, there's 30,000 blogs out there. You can go review, well, you know, bond yields collapse and oil is collapse and the tariff has been extended. Yeah, okay, that's great. Okay. How does that affect us? Okay. We're speaking from the trader's point of view. We're not speaking from the investor's point of view that we're holding on to our Facebook shares for the next 12 years. We're not holding, you know, we're not talking about that investor. We're not talking about the guy who's long Amazon at, you know, 1900 and sees the stock trade to 1800. We're not talking about you. Okay. Everybody knows Amazon is great and Apple is great and blah, blah, blah. And the bull market will generationally, generationally, continue going higher, allegedly, right? We don't know, but we think, right? We think. We're not talking to you, okay? So you don't need to, you can come, well, Amazon is cheap. Yeah, 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 Amazon will be at 5,000 one day, okay? You're, you're out of the way. We're talking about the intraday active trader, okay? And when you see a market that is bent on one headline away from either making or breaking you, that's a problem, okay? So when you're looking at, and again, my opinion for the last two and a half years, I personally don't think, a trade deal will get done, at least not with uh, this administration. I don't believe so. I, 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 I don't think I, if they were really 
seriously wanting to get a deal done, you wouldn't see a headline every 30 seconds, the deal is on, the deal is off, the deal is on, the deal is off, tariff on, tariff off, tariff exp- extended, deal wants to be done. So I personally think that. Again, am I wrong? Look, I'm an idiot. Everybody knows I'm an idiot. I'm the chief of the idiots, the king of the idiots, the messiah of the idiots. Okay? So my opinion doesn't count. I'm just saying, I'm just calling like I see it. I don't think this deal will get done in this administration. So I think when you're dealing with a market that is always one headline away, okay, from burying you, and we've seen this time and time again, you have to act a little bit prudent, especially for your new traders that you haven't seen the aggressive nature of a, of a po- politically unrest environment or a global a potential collapse environment. You are only linear. Right? That's all you guys are, a linear. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not your fault when you started trading, but there is a dark side to this. And there's an, and there's an area that can take your money very, very aggressively. And when you saw a market, when you actually are in a market, and you can see in the last several weeks how aggressive this market actually has been. And when you look at these big exa- exaggerated engulfing candles, it shows you the massive volatility, right? It shows you how really aggressive things can happen. And I, I always say this all the time. People love the idea of volatility until things get too volatile, and then you don't know what you're doing. And when you saw this week, and I traded Tuesday, I wasn't here Monday, so I traded Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. This week was probably one of the most aggressive trading sessions I can remember in a very, very long time. Aggressive is a very, very subjective word, okay? Aggressive for me is very good. Aggressive for a two, three, four-year trader who's only seen the linear bull market, not so much because, again, your brain is not wired to the worst-case scenario. Your brain is not wired to the what-if. All you're still seeing and all you're still hearing, because, again, unfortunately, your only exposure is to social media, you have your blinders on. Everything will be okay. This is a bull market, and we will be fine at the end. Maybe, maybe not. But you definitely have to adjust your trading. And when you're, when you're looking at a market like this, you have two alternatives. You can sit there and pray. Again, God doesn't care about your position, I promise you. Or you have to be proactive. And in this case, I do believe if you are a year trader, two-year trader, three-year trader, certain days you should just have no business in the market, absolutely no business in the market. So if the market gaps down four or 500 points, again, I understand the whole thing. Well, the value is to the upside. Blah, 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 blah. Let me buy some deep out of the money calls. If the market rallies, I'll make money. Maybe, maybe not. Just ask to all those people who had a 400 point gap down in the market and then the Dow went down 800 points for the day. Again, nothing is uncertain. There's no guarantees. But again, whatever your process is, is your process. But I, I, I've definitely come across, and, I, and, I, and I, again, I speak to so many traders throughout the week, and especially traders on, even like on Twitter or Stockless, they're really asking for a lot of answers that you can't just summarize in a one, you know, one interaction. There's so many moving parts in the market that if you're wrong, your account is depleted. I mean, really, really depleted. So I think when you're trading a tape like this, again, use, you know, use prudence. I mean, we're all adults. This is, again, this is a business for adults. Don't think for a second that, you know, you're 21, 22, 23 years old, you have the answer because you made money buying some $2 stock that was up 250%. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. That's great. And I hope I wish everybody the best. But anybody who's been in the trenches for many, many years will tell you this is a, a type of environment that if you don't have a firm grip of the market and you don't have the ability to say, whoa, 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 this is just way too aggressive, even for me, then you're going to find yourself upside down. And upside down is not a good place to find yourself. So when you are trading, for example, come Monday morning, okay, and you see headlines of bond yields and China on, China off. Ask yourself, is this really the safest place, the safest interval for your experience level? Again, I'm not talking to the investor that's, you know, that's sitting in a position that's against them, that's going to be in that position for five years. Don't, you, don't need, you don't need to defend Amazon to me. Okay, I get it. It's going to be $3,000. Okay, you don't need to defend, you know, you don't need to defend Apple, quarter of a trillion dollars in freaking money, right, in the, in the books. You don't have to defend them. Okay, up, down, up, down, up, down. This doesn't affect you. We're talking about for the trader who is just trying to get their footing inside the door. They're trying to build a foundation. And I'm telling you, this is a type of market that, again, you don't need to pay your tuition to the market to figure out how aggressive it is. As long as you have eyeballs and you can see the ir- the, ir- the, the most inconsistent days, and sometimes we see some really, really inconsistent days, it's very, very important that some days you turn around and say, you know what? You know, Dan might be an idiot, but he's not a schmuck. 
Okay, maybe he does know what I'm what, what he what he's saying. Because some days when you see Amazon trading a three dollar spread and Tesla traded a dollar spread and Netflix traded a dollar spread with hundred share lots, that's a prime example of market structure, right? Market structure breaking down right before your eyes. And those are the days you kind of want to step away. And those are the days that I, I've really uh, you know one of my better attributes. I can I can find these days very very quickly. You can see it pre market. Um, you can see it pre market very very quickly. And once I start seeing a potential market structure breakdown 20 years in, I'll still step away. You know, maybe I won't be as active, one or two trades, but I won't be as active because I know he's, I always know there'll be better value. So going into this week, again, up, down, up, down, all over the place. Can we go up a thousand points this week? Absolutely. Right. Can we go down a thousand points this week? A hundred percent. Why not? We still have the same, uh, we still have exactly the same um, materialistic information right in front of us. Nothing has changed. At least I, at least I don't know nothing's changed. Uh, the word recession has been thrown around very, very aggressively until the retailers come out and say, "Hey, we had great quarters." And look what Walmart, uh, Target, and Costco. Did. Look, does anybody know what, what's really going to happen a year from now, two years from now, five years? Nobody knows. It's the stock market, guys. It's the most unpredictable, predictable place that you can you can allocate your capital. It's very, very aggressive at times, whether that aggressive is good, bad, or indifferent. We don't know. It's all depending on your on your level. But again, if you're a new trader, give yourself the best chance to succeed. Give yourself the best chance to live out your potential before burning out, and especially more important, before burning out uh, your capital. So crazy week, okay? Crazy, crazy week. Uh, 1% all across the wards uh, on the index is down. Uh, they didn't even paint a picture. Ridiculous volatility, up, down, up, down, 800 points, 300 points. Futures are, you know, you go to sleep one day, the futures are down 200 points. You wake up, they're up 100 points. You go to the bathroom, they're back down 200 points. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And I think that's going to spill over into uh, tomorrow's action, to Monday's, Tuesday, Wednesday's action. Because again, until the big heavy hitters, and the heavy hitters are the ones that are holding funds that are $30 billion, they come back from the Hamptons, they come back from, from anywhere that they are vacationing throughout the summer in, in, in Europe, whatever the case may be, until they come and start putting their, their money at, at risk, putting bets on the table, you're going to see this expanded role in volatility because nobody's there to defend the other side of the price. It's just reality. So you have to adjust your trading. And when the market is going down, the market is going up so thin. Again, just trust me when I tell you, selectivity is very, very important. Be an adult. Nobody's going to look at you any different. Again, sometimes when, when market structure does break down or it's just not regular, okay, or it's inconsistent, you have to be adult about it and kind of sit, sit out. So going into this week, again, I'm pretty delta neutral, okay? Um, you know, up, down, up, down, I'm fine with it. I, I, I have a course of action for everything. When you have uncertainty, obviously, um, obviously my... First instinct is sell, right? First instinct is sell. When you have uncertainty, you know, your first instinct is not to buy, it's to sell. And I think we could have uh, we could have a market that is going to give us good opportunities on both sides. We saw that all last week. Uh, and if you look at it technically, just from a technical point of view, here's kind of the bubble that we're in. Okay, here's the kind of the macro bubble that we're in in the NASDAQ 100. Again, I, I trade primarily beta stocks that represent the NASDAQ 100. So this is my uh, course of uh, interest. So if you look at the short-term interval on, on the Qs, if you notice here, it got stopped twice, right? Stopped twice on this 186 level. 185.95 is the high on the 14th. Friday's high, da da da, da 185.95. Again, there's absolutely nothing random about technical analysis. It's pretty close, right? No, not, not usually to the penny, but it's pretty close. And obviously, we'll talk about this in nausea, okay? In nausea, supply and demand, uh, on the 24th uh, workshop. But again, for the market to go higher, for the Qs to go higher, the, the NASDAQ 100 needs to reclaim uh, 186, right? It needs to reclaim 186 and build. And again, the next stop is 87. Again, for the bulls to get very, very aggressive, we have to shun these headlines. Get out of the way, right? Get out of the way. I don't care about China. Don't care about the bonds, right? Don't care about anything. We need price action to engulf headlines. And if that starts to happen, yes, we can start you know, maybe grinding back up. Again, if we start any close above 86, we start grinding back. Any close above 87, we'll go to 80, 88, 60s. And for the bulls to really, really get loose, we need a close, a macro close uh, over this uh, 188, uh, 60s levels on the Qs. Until that happens, again, just watch the, you know, watch the price action. Watch how stocks react. Okay, watch how the stocks react to headlines. If they start going muted, it's very, very bullish. If they start to accelerate fear, it's obviously very, very bearish. And obviously, you can see here any close on the Qs 
uh, below 180 becomes very, very aggressive. And if you don't believe me, all you need to do is look at the individual price action. And like I said, this week was incredibly aggressive. And I usually start out with Friday's pivots. I want to start out with Thursday, just, just to give you an idea. So here was Thursday's action, right? Here's Thursday's action, August the 15th. Just to give you an example how really aggressive. This is so this was for uh, Thursday's watch list, right? With Tuesday was very, very good. We caught a massive blow off top on Roku. You guys remember that trade? I, I tweeted out 41 could be a blow off top. It traded right to supply, came right in. But uh, Wednesday, I just don't remember. Well, Wednesday was okay. Wednesday was okay. But Thursday's session, Thursday's session was ridiculous. And if you look at the pivots on Thursday, right? These were the ones that stood out, I mean, really aggressively. Uh, Tesla, ADPT, Netflix, and this was probably from the feedback I got, okay, from so many people that I spoke to. This is probably the biggest trade for many traders throughout the you know throughout the year. If you had to locate on this thing or uh, went in deep, okay, January seventy or even January seventy puts, you did very very well. I mean, very very well. And this was one of the most aggressive trading days um, I can remember in a very, very long time. And you could just see how technical analysis becomes so seamless once you start buying into it, okay? It, it, it's like anything that you trade. You could, you could trade options. If you don't actually full believe in options, you're never gonna make money. If you don't fully trade, you know, if you don't fully accept the power of trading Forex, you're never gonna be successful in Forex. And, and pivots and technical analysis exactly the same way. If you don't fully engulf and embrace the power of the pivot, might as well not trade it because again, no matter what process you trade, and again, you, you could trade anything you want. It could, you could trade two cent stocks on the pink sheets, okay? Whatever process you trade, you wanna make sure, okay? You wanna make sure that you're 100% committed to it, that you will give yourself ample time to let that process really, really work out and you do every single thing possible to stay in the game to kind of reach your potential. And Thursday was just absolutely out of control. Uh, NVIDIA, the reason why I'm not talking about NVIDIA and Amazon, NVIDIA gapped down, it was like, it gapped down to, this is nothing to do with earnings, it gapped down to like 46 and change, so this pivot was compromised. Uh, Amazon gapped down into the 40s and then gapped up, that was the day that futures were just going all over the place. But here's the, here's the, tr the trades are just insane. So. We talked about Tesla, and again, this is the power, again, of technical analysis. So here was Tesla, had that big, big move, and I caught it the day before, but here was the big move, and it closed, first closed over the, under the 50-day moving average. And we knew right away, once this thing, uh, once this thing confirmed the previous day's price action, this thing can really, really collapse. And the reason, again, why I said 216.50, 216, you can see the low of the day. And again, if you believe in the, st the, tra the stocks that trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, again, wink, wink, that's the whole part of the PS60 theory, you believe that the stock potentially could get down to the lower Bollinger Band, and it got destroyed. I mean, absolutely destroyed. Congratulations to all you guys. It went from 216 to 211 on one candle, literally on one candle. Obviously, this becomes a very, very aggressive pivot. Uh, and then, and it just got crazier. Uh, ADPT, uh, which which was actually amazing how impressive the stock actually is. It had really crappy earnings, really really crappy earnings, engulfed the earnings, and went higher as the market went down 200, uh, 800 points. And Adaptic, uh, 44.70.45 for built, uh, it was going to go higher. Uh, oops, ADPT. Yeah, so here was you know again here's the previous day's candle at 44 and a half, and once it started building, the damn thing went to 49. I mean, it's unbelievable the strength in the stock. Obviously, it's not the thickest stock in the world, but again, price action doesn't care if you're in the stock or not. So incredible move here. Uh, Netflix, which I caught really nicely. Uh, Netflix, I caught really nicely. Here is 296.50, 296. Now, why was Netflix? Why was that area so important? That was the area that confirmed the previous linear regression line. If you see this, the August the 7th low was 296.80. So I said, if this thing starts building 296.50, 296, it could get destroyed. And I'll tell you, watching order flow is the most basic thing that you can do. You don't even have to be an experienced trader. If you're watching order flow and you see, and we saw, I mean, we saw literally people dumping 25, 30,000 shares at a time, market orders, kept on knocking down the stock 50, 60 cents. This was an absolute destruction of, the, of price action. Uh, it broke 296.50 and it went down to all the way to 288. Just absolute, just murder, absolute murder on, on Netflix. But if you thought Tesla and Netflix were good that day, 
This is the mother of all burritos, or lack of burritos, no meat, right? So BYND, again, um, again, phenomenal trading stock, an absolute trading stock. So two, 161 sneaky, 158 macro short. And again, here, again, technical analysis, guys, there is no room for interpretation, okay? It really is no room for interpretation. So here was 161, okay? Here was 161. It stopped. Uh, right on the linear regression line. Okay, so that was the sneaky pivot. If it started building below 61, I believe the stock had a shot to get to 58. If it got to 58, I had a, believe they had a shot to get to 56. Why was all these levels important? Because again, 61 was the previous day's low. 158 was the lowest candle, okay, on rising 50-day support. So if it started building below 158, the measured next potential was to 156. So why was 156 important? Well, excuse me, 154 important because that was the last line of defense. Everybody see that, guys? This is the linear regression line. This is the last line of defense. So any build now below that 154, and I tweeted this out. I, I, I literally tweeted out. If you go to my Twitter feed, you, you'll see I said, there's a puncher's chance this thing gets to 136, 137. Did I think it was going to get to 136, 137 10 minutes after I tweeted it when it was at 154? Absolutely not. Okay, nobody in their right mind could have possibly believed that or even, even, even thought it was possible. But this thing just got absolutely destroyed and went down to 137. So again, for all you guys who caught that, just an, Thursday was just an absolute just freak show. Just an absolute freak show. Uh, Friday... Okay, Friday I thought was fine, right? I, I thought Friday's session was fine. Um, I caught Roku. Uh, I, I caught Roku. I missed Tesla. Uh, don't ask. Oh, no, excuse me. I'm on the, the wrong page. Here's Friday. Here's Friday. So I caught Roku. Uh, I caught Roku. Here is the pivot on Roku. Where the hell is the pivot on Roku? Uh, Roku, yeah. So I gave, I, I gave two side pivots. Again, these pivots don't care which side they go. Uh, we talked about 134 to the upside, 128 to the downside. I shorted the downside break. I, you know, I, I thought the stock was really going to get hit, and it went down a dollar, which was fine. Um, I took some pretty decent cash flow, bro broke even on, on the rest. But in the process, I missed. Uh, in the process, I missed Tesla, uh, which kind of sucked because if you look at Tesla, where are we? Where? Yeah, if you look at Tesla, two nineteen needs to build. Uh, Tesla went. You know, had a pretty strong move. Uh, here's a sixty minute view on Tesla. Right here's the two nineteen. And the stock went right to supply of 222. So I missed this trade, which I was very, very peeved off about. But again, it is what it is. Uh, JD, I screwed up. I wound up taking a break-even trade on JD. Um, I just screwed it up. I screwed it up. Um, it broke 31, and it hit supply twice on the five-minute interval. And the one thing about the one thing about intervals are once they get rejected, there is no, there absolutely is no. Um, there is no guarantee they're going to re re reclaim. There's no guarantee. So I wound up scratching the trade and the stock went up 40 cents, whatever. But again, here's the power of the pivot, guys. And again, there's nothing, there's nothing random about pivots. And again, for all you guys who called BYND, congratulations again, right? So I, put, I tweeted this out pre-market. Initial range, 148.50, 149 to the upside. 143 it held twice pre-market. If it starts building, it's going to go lower. And here is again BYMD. And this is what we talk about a sneaky pivot, right? So here was BYMD. Okay, so here was BYMD right here. This is why I said 143. 140, oh, 143 is the low here, right? 143.04, 143, 143. Again, if you guys notice, it's not the low of the channel, it's not the upper channel. It's a sneaky pivot. This is what we talk about sneaky pivots. And once it broke 143, right? Once it broke 143, just got absolutely destroyed and got down to the 36.7. How, you know, how specific are these pivots, right? I said 148 and a half, right? 148 and a half needs to build. Look where it stopped. Look, look, look where it stopped, guys. 148 and a half, right? Again, there's nothing random about pivots. Once you get into the mind frame of technical analysis, you're gonna really, really appreciate how seamless technical analysis is. Again, unfortunately, so many of you guys are, the only exposure you have is to social media, right? It really does take a lot of effort to go through a lot of bad information to get to validity. And when you're trading for a long, long time, and again, if all you guys, are, some of you guys have been with me in the live webinar for over nine years, um, you kind of see the difference between what social media is and what price action is. A little bit different, right? A little bit different on a daily basis. So going into this week, guys, again, for all you new traders, be careful. Okay, be careful. You don't need to trade every single day. Look for value. 
Look for areas of interest that you can capitalize on reward without very, very small risk allocation. That's the name of the game. For all you new traders that are trading pivots, if you get a pivot, you get cash flow, take some off and use break even as your stop. Even if you're wrong, the stock keeps on going with the direction you're trading. It's the safest way. You know, it's the most seamless way. And the most important thing is it's the most methodical way you can build up your account without burning a lot of brain cells. Guys, again, for all you guys who are joining us uh, next Saturday, it will be uh, nine o'clock Eastern time in our live webinar. It will be recorded. Okay. It will be recorded and sent out the week after. And uh, I believe that again, if you're stuck in neutral and you're looking for a process again, especially all you guys have been following me for a very, very long time. Uh, if nothing at all, just an alternative view of the market, could, I believe can give you an extra edge in the way you view your trading. Guys, God bless. Have an awesome, awesome trading week, and I will see you on the field tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.